Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Welcome to Fushan Mobile e-learning clinic. My name is Sonia Laloa and I'll be guiding you through the chemistry class. In today's lesson, we're going to consider the shapes of molecules and solids. And we'll be coming up, we'll start up with the polar and non-polar molecules. Then we'll look at electronegativity. Afterwards, we'll consider shape of shapes of um, simple covalent molecules. Then we'll look at intermolecular forces and conclude with solids, um, their structures and properties. All right. Let's talk about polar and non-polar substances. So when you hear the name, when you hear the word polar, what does it suggest to you? Polar substances are substances that are deflected by an electrostatic field. They are destructed by electrostatic field. For example, let's say you have a particular rod. Okay, that diagram will be displayed on your screen just about now. Yes, from the diagram you can see there in a burette you have the first item which is water and you see the rod charged rod placed by its side and you can see that even though it is not making contact with the rod it is deflecting towards the angle towards the direction of the rod yes that's what polar substances do they bend towards the direction of the charge or away from the direction of the charge depending on the kind of charge that is being passed through the um, rod also non-polar substances they are unaffected by these charges and what is the reason what is the secret behind their deflection and their refusal to deflect one of the major things that is responsible for this is the structure of the of the substances the structure of the substances when we look at the substances that we have listed as um polar substances we discover that the weight of uh, when you try to draw a picture or you try to draw a structure uh, okay let's see what the structure of water looks like uh, from the structure of water you can see there that the weight of the um, of the place that contains the oxygen is not the same the weight of the system is not balanced all through as against that of the um, cyclohexane or the benzene or even the um, tetra um, tetrachloromethane. In tetrachloromethane, all the every side, every every side of it is balanced. The weight is evenly distributed. Of course, our tetrachloromethane structure will look like this. And we have um, chlorine here, chlorine here, chlorine here, and chlorine there. So. We can see that everything is balanced. There is no angle, there is no tilt that it would not be effective, that it would not be balanced. But when you look at the oxygen, the water molecule, um, I'll just try to draw something. But in the water molecule, we actually have oxygen connected to two hydrogens. But in the real sense of it, this oxygen has six... Um, uh, six um, it has four uh, it has yes six outermost electrons so this show two this show another two now this other one is within itself and this other one is also within itself so is these two also are there but within itself now these are the ones for the oxygen itself when the substance is when the charged body is brought around this particular structure because of the imbalance because of the lack of symmetry because of the lack of symmetry in the system the system the thing tends to move towards the um, the charged rod and why is it moving towards the charged rod the system itself is not so balanced the attraction within is not enough to prevent it from going elsewhere as against what is existing here the attraction within is so much whatever the charge rod is building bringing seem irrelevant but the attraction within the system keeps it together and it just falls through so that is how we differentiate between polar and non-polar some substances polar molecules are they are balanced they do they are not attracted by 
charged uh, electrostatic bodies but uh, sorry non-polar molecules rather they are balanced they are not attracted by electrostatic bodies but polar molecules on the other hand are attracted by electrostatic bodies electrostatic forces all right let's take a quick break and when we come back we'll look at electronegativity and the other topics but before we go um some in a few seconds some questions will be displayed on your screen and you are required to answer them and we'll get back to you in a few welcome back yes we talked about the polar and non-polar molecules earlier so we're going into electronegativity when we're talking about electro electronegativity we are talking about the ability of a particular atom to attract electrons to itself ability of a particular atom to attract electrons to itself now um when we compare that to polarity of course there is a relationship between them when systems when um, bodies are elements that are of different um ne electronegativities especially the further apart the electronegativity the more the likelihood of it forming polar substances why polar substances because in polar substances polar substances are joined are joined together via ionic bonds they are joined together via ionic bonds so they do not have electron sharing they do not have electron sharing so common amongst them so the further apart the electrons are the atoms are from each other that is the elements maybe um, a particular element like um, fluorine and other elements like sodium what they will produce is definitely uh, polar, a non-polar substance but when you're talking about material substances like carbon and oxygen which are kind of closely related to each other and moreover and there are more of them non-metals probably even carbon and uh, maybe um, sulfur and oxygen they are non-metals and they are close to each other they find themselves in the same region range of um, group that is between the class and um, group of um, group five and um, group five and four and group seven whatever bond will be formed within them would not be ionic bond it will be a kind of a covalent bond so because of the covalent bond it is there is a very high chance of a polar of a polar substance to be formed rather than a non-polar substance to be formed so we observe that elements which are close to each other in the electrochemical series especially among the not um, among the electronegative uh, among the uh, highly sorry among the non-metals elements which are close to each other in the electrochemical series especially among the non-metals form non form polar um, polar substances while elements which are far apart from each other especially metal to non-metal in the electrochemical series of course they do form non-polar substances so and let's take a look at the shapes of covalent bonds we'll talk about a couple of substances um, we'll take water um, ammonia and um, methane as examples so let's discuss the um, shapes and shapes of simple covalent bond molecules we're going to take into consideration um, methane um, ammonia um, water also let's look at carbon dioxide all right methane ammonia water and carbon dioxide i would like you to see something uh, you have a carbon your carbon always have four um outermost electron normally when you're drawing the sp um, configuration of your carbon what you should have your c should have um one sp one s two s and p two of course two p because two p two p two p two and uh, why two p two because there are six atoms six electrons in carbon and this one has used up two but for the carbon to actually form something like methane 
it must release it must have four electrons in its atomous shell that are ready to interact with other electrons and to achieve that it must not exist like this it must exist in 1s2 2s1 2p3 in which you have a this one will be something like 1s um, up and down 2s up and down and we have 2p up and up but this would be 1s 2s to p so instead of this particular electron to be here this electron will vacate its position and will come to somewhere here so that when the electron of the other substance come it can click and peg into it can fit in into those vacant spaces uh, to achieve this to achieve um, this kind of expression so on your screen about now you see what the diagrammatic appearance of your methane would look like you can see that it forms a tetrahedral shape a tetrahedral sh a hydro shape and the angle between them between the molecules it's about um, 109 degrees about 109 degrees also if you take a look at um, the nitrogen atom nitrogen of course is one a and you have two of hydrogen so it is going to be the one in the center and your nitrogen naturally nitrogen would be 1s2 2s2 2p3 1s2 2s2 2p3 and that's like one Two, three. So it looks good enough to accommodate almost anyone. Uh, at least the uh, the atoms of the hydrogen would fit in into one one of this each, and so they to actually form a kind of um a pyramid. It forms a kind of a pyramid. And of course, well, uh, yes, about now you'll be seeing a diagram of it. You see the, uh, the joint, the two bonds that are here will swing to one part. They will swing to one part and hold their own fort in one place, most likely at the top. And because of their nature, they would tend to change, uh, alter the shape of the substance. All right, let's take a quick look at oxygen in water water contains two hydrogens and one oxygen so oxygen should be in the center and we know our oxygen o should be 1s2 2s2 2p4 and that should be something like 1s2 2s2 and 2p Four. That's like one, two, three, then four. So these are one S two. These are two S two, and we have two P four. All right. In this particular one, you can see that there are two different systems there's two different cells two different orbitals that have been completely filled by the oxygen now these are uh, these ones are the ones that are responsible for it not being polar um for it being polar it is filled up so they too will form their own kind of an angle they will form their own kind of angle uh from the picture that is being displayed about now you will see it there the original shape of the water molecule 
you see that the molecules they um, the joining place of um, oxygen the this particular two field ones hang around one corner and they displace the rest of the hydrogen at angles so a total of about 109 degrees about 109 degrees is the angle that is found in the molecules of water but let's quickly look at carbon dioxide that's carbon four oxide carbon four oxide has two oxygen one carbon all right um if you remember uh, if we consider carbon four oxide we know that carbon four oxide has c and two oxygens which means the two oxygens will be outside and one carbon so remember what a carbon would look like for it to exist in that nature it has to come back to this state of course and then consider two oxygens connecting to each of the pair of um each of the pair of um this thing the electrons so uh from the view from the picture that you can see on the screen you can see that it is actually a linear bonding system it's a linear bonding system you have your carbon and you have your, um, your oxygen and you have your oxygen and they are all completely at about 180 degrees from each other so it is very very stable it's very very comfortable so that's that about the structure of the um, shapes of um, simple covalent molecules let's quickly talk, consider intermolecular forces intermolecular forces talking about the um, kind of bonds the existing between the molecules that is the intermolecular forces the forces that keep the molecules of the atom of the substances together that's what we want to look at now um, we of course we've discussed what keeps atoms together to form molecules we mentioned the ionic bond mentioned the covalent bond we talked about the two types of covalent bonds which are the ordinate and the dative covalent bonds but this time around, i want to look at what keeps the molecules together the molecules together well we talked about graphite and diamond i remember vividly telling us that graphite are in layers and they are stuck together um, by um, they are stuck together by some forces which i described as van der waals forces yes those is a, that's a kind of force that keeps some molecules or a molecule attached to another molecule it can be two molecules of a particular substance now when you look at uh, inside the pro when you produce your um, f um chloroform that's some trioxo uh, trichloromethane we said that trichloromethane is a polar substance when you produce your chloroform we discussed earlier that the amount of charge is not balanced so because of the imbalance in the amount of charge one place is positive and another end is negative the negative end and the positive end there is a negative end let's say this is the shape there's a negative end and there's a positive end and there's another one of the atom here uh, molecule here so the negative end of one is attracted to the positive end of the other the negative end of one is attracted to the positive end of the other thereby a kind of a force is being induced so this force because of the, it looks like a, an ionic relationship therefore the force there is strong the force there is strong and it is one of the things that make this kind of substances uh, very very difficult to disintegrate it makes them very difficult to disintegrate it makes them very stable and they form very strong bonds of course we also need to talk about the van der waals forces i remember really telling us that the van der waals forces is one of the weakest bonds you can think of because the bond is not strong at all yes it keeps the substances together but in van der waals forces it should be noted that the core of a uh, of the electron of this of the atom is not too far from the uh, from the outer uh, from the um, orbitals the core that is the nucleus is not too far from the orbitals and the interrelationship between them 
is the 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 molecules tend to pull more towards their core than towards um, the orbitals so the force is not so strong it is a kind of a dipole dipole attraction but it is not as strong and effective as the dipole dipole attraction we also have the uh, 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 hydrogen bond the hydrogen bond the hydrogen bond is generally not so strong it's, it's a generally weak bond it exists between hydrogen and other compounds when hydrogen tries to behave as a metal and it interacts with other compounds so the hydrogen bond some, is formed and sometimes it might choose to behave as a non-metal and try to interact with other substances it can also be formed so these are the three kind forces of attraction that exist between the um, molecules three forces of action that exist between molecules we have the dipole dipole attraction we have the van der waals forces and we have the hydrogen bond okay let's quickly look at solids their structures and properties so let's consider solids and their structures solids their structures and properties all right um basically solids solids are um of course we know that they contain molecules they contain atoms and when we look at the solid of a particular compound we we'll find molecules there the molecules of each solid of each substance are being bound together by certain kind of forces um, we have different kinds of um, sol solids um, we have the non-metallic solids we have the metallic solids we have even the ones that are, are, are a cross breed of both so when we start to classify solids we can classify um, the bonds between them into the covalent solids the ionic solids we can talk about molecular um, um, crystals and can talk about metallic solids okay let's start with covalent solids covalent solids they are joined together by covalent bonds the atoms of these solids are joined together by covalent bonds and generally covalent bonds are strong generally covalent bonds are strong so they tend to form very hard and where they are very hard they are brittle as well very brittle substances they do not ionize they do not uh, because of the covalent bond when you put them in water they do not ionize and most likely they may not even they, they may, many of them are not soluble in water very many of them are not soluble in water uh, also um, they, 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 their electrons are not free to move around the electrons are not free to move around so they form non-good conductors they form non-conductors they don't have they're not good conductors of electricity nor it except for the case of um, a unique case of graphite a unique case of graphite which is a good conductor aside graphite all of them they are non-good conductors they're not good conductors uh, they do not allow the flow of electricity they, they they are just fused they are not good conductors they are their are, they are element and um, their electrons rather are fused they are restricted from moving around so they do not carry the charges from one place to the other all right let's consider the ionic solids ionic solids like sodium chloride like um, calcium oxide magnesium oxide magnesium sulfide many of them like that these solids are formed by ionic interactions of the atoms of the molecules ionic interaction of the atoms of the molecules one particular atom give away electrons to another atom and they both bond together and that's that's how it works so in this particular condition we do notice that solids ionic solids are non-conductors their electrons are, in, are at work but when they are dissolved in water or uh, and uh, when they are being converted into an electrolyte then they become um, they become active they now can transmit electricity and eat just like your common salt your common salt without being dissolved in water it cannot transmit electricity neither can it transmit heat but once it is dissolved in water then it can go ahead and prove itself as a good conductor. Of course, they are hard generally. They are hard and they are, they are brittle as well. And 
um, they dissolve in polar solvents. They dissolve in polar solvents. Okay, let's consider molecular crystals. Molecular crystals, um, these substances are not, they are not, um, they are not um, usually, they, 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 they are molecules. Molecules that are joined together. Most of the time, they are molecules that are joined together. And when you talk about the force that holds them together, the force that holds the forces that hold the force that holds them together rather may be either of the hydrogen bond. It may be um, Van der Waals forces, and it may even be a permanent dipole-dipole attraction force. It could be either a di permanent dipole-dipole. It could be Van der Waals forces, and it could be an hydrogen bond. Now, since most of them are, they, most of them do exist in liquid form. They are volatile. Most of them, they are volatile liquids, and some of them are gases. So we cannot really talk about dissolving them in water or a polar solvent. Um, when it comes to um, strength, they are soft. They are soft. They are not hard. They are not brittle. They are completely soft. Uh, of course, many of them are liquid. So. There's no test we can do to take for their brittleness. Um, let's talk about the metallic solids. Metallic solids, very unique, very interesting. They are formed from metals. Metals are the attract form of attraction that exists is the attraction between the, the protons of the metals and the electrons at the orbits. So they kind of like are metallic in nature and just as the name suggests they are metallic bonds and talk about the kind of bond that exists between the uh, molecules of uh, the atoms of iron the atoms of um, copper the atoms of magnesium ma atoms of of um sulfur um, so, sorry not sulfur the atoms of um, potassium of sodium and the likes so these are what we're talking about in metallic bonds generally metallic bonds are they are strong but they are malleable unlike the others that are not malleable they are malleable they can be bent they can be processed in, a, in about a second from now uh, the particular table will be blown up on your screen to show the relationship between the nature of substances and this particular um, groupings that is the so um, covalent group the ionic the molecular crystals and the metallic solids all right there it is you can see that from the from the table that when it comes to conductivity of course the ionic are not good conductors unless they are in their molten state the you know, covalent are not volatile when it's at room temperature most of them are solids and it is electrostatic forces of the positive and negative in the ionic bonds that keeps them together and of course the metallic bonds are only soluble in liquid metals okay so in this particular lesson we've learned so much about the shape of molecules and solids and we talked about first started, we started with polar and non-polar molecules and then we went to look at the electronegativity and also we spoke about the shape of simple covalent molecules inter intermolecular forces and we concluded with solids talking about the structure and their properties all right in a few seconds some questions will be displayed on your screen to test your understanding of what has been taught in this lesson please do have to attempt them and if there's any part of this lesson which you do not understand you can go over the video one more time for clarification thank you